Hey, whoa, 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 what are you doing over uh, there? Nothing. Oh, what's up with this box? Uh, man, I'm just about to explain that. Wait, 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 don't take that out yet. What, don't take this out? Ah, oh, god damn it. All right, hand it over. All right, here you go. Oh. Clear out, I gotta use the table. All right, go, shoot. Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is gonna be about printing some different materials through the... Uh -huh. Nice. Through the uh, Anet E10 printer, which is now hiding under a box, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, a few months ago, I don't know if I put a video up of this or not, but I made these uh, R2-D2 CPU arm probe things for a client. Now, this is a resin copy of a part that was printed on the Form 2 printer back here. And it's beautiful. I mean, like, these came out great. So, I figured as a test, I would print a couple of these on the Anet E10, hiding under the box back there. I should put a picture here for anybody who hasn't seen one, so you can see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. Um, and that's what's under the box, hiding out. Um, so, I figured it'd be a good kind of like I don't know, benchmark of something that I've seen at like probably the highest quality I could have it printed um, versus what that can do. Um, so I figured I'd print some of these and I didn't do them at the high setting. I did these at 0.15 millimeter layer height, which is kind of like a, a medium draft setting. It's not super low res, but it's not the finest setting either. Uh, I did one in PLA. And you can see the top is missing. I just ran out of filament right at the very end. Literally, I don't know, probably 20 layers left, and I ran out of filament. Unfortunate. But uh, overall, overall uh, the print went fine. Um, I did have a little bit of sag where uh, the supports were meeting, but I also was running this a little bit hot and really, really fast up till about probably like the first third of the print. And it definitely affected the quality. If I don't know if I get the light on this right, but from about here down, the quality is pretty bad. And then from here up, it's quite a bit better. And that was just changing the speed of the print. I should have adjusted the the uh, heat as well, but um, just just the speed thing was like throwing it off. And you see, like there's a lot of texture on the surface here that is not up here. Um, so anyway, PLA, and the next test was PETG which came out really, really nice. Um, if you haven't used PETG before, it's awesome, but you have to print really hot. I think I was able to run this at 250. My previous printer, I had to put it all the way at 260 and it would still barely do it because I don't think the extruder could keep up with the temperature. This, the ANET E10, ANET E10. Um, the ANET E10 had no issue printing the PETG. It came out really, really nice. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but like the little line details that are in here, they all came out really clean. Uh, it's a good print. I had a little bit of sagging on the bottom here where it met the supports, but not bad. Easy to clean up. I would have liked it to be a little cleaner, but it's it's not bad. But yeah, PETG came out good. However, I did have two fails with PETG. This one, my filament looped over and snagged and caused a printer to like literally the the control box for the ANA E10 sits next to the actual printer. It had crashed into the printer and this fell over. So that was a bummer. So I started another one and I got to here and it fell over. It just came off at the base a little bit. I think that I needed to adjust my bed just a hair, make it a hair higher so that it would get a little bit better adhesion. Um, but it worked fine right up until the top and it makes all the, the printers make a lot of crazy moves up here and then it just fell over. Unfortunate. But third try was a charm. Worked out great. And then the next test was ABS. And same thing with the ABS. Printed one, fell over. I lost the whole top. Printed great up to this point. Looked really good. So then I tried another one. And that one also fell over. Melted. So here we have two. And then I tried another one. And that one also fell over. Now this one... I did a little bit of a strength test on, um, and I, I gave it a, a good pull, and the layers separated a bit, which means that the layer adhesion was not great, but it's been a little cool in here, so I decided to put a box over the printer. After the box is on, 
it worked perfectly. And this one's nice and sturdy. It's really strong. Uh, and it came out good. And I think the ABS finish actually looks the best out of all of them so far. Um, it didn't get very much sag on the bottom. And all the detail looks really good. And, and remember, I printed this at 0.15 layer height. So this is not even close to uh, the highest level of detail. The printer can go do 0.6 layer, 0.06 millimeter layer height. So this is um, more than double uh, the finest print quality and came out really good. Uh, if you guys haven't used PETG before, this material is super, super strong and awesome. And I, I highly recommend it if you're like making mechanical parts, uh, things that hold stuff together. I think this is, this material is great. Um, but anyway, just a quick look. I will be doing a proper review on that printer soon. There are a couple little issues that I've had to kind of figure out with this thing. And one more issue that I'm going to get into in the review video. So it hasn't worked perfectly out of the box. However, again, I think that, I think that like these prints, they look really good. So it's printing decently now, but I had to do some tweaks. So I'm going to get into that in the review video. And um, I have some more 3PO stuff coming up. And anyway, sorry for the hiatus there, guys, with the, the videos. But um, week before last, I was in New York for the whole week working with Tom Spina. And last week, I spent making costumes frantically for uh, production that's happening this weekend. So it's just super busy. At Tom Spina's in New York, he just got a CR-10S, which we got to play with a lot. I actually assembled it and ran some of the first prints on it. So um, it gives me a good idea, good comparison for the ANET E10, so I can talk about both a little bit, which is nice because I've wanted to review a CR10. I would like to get one myself. I actually want one even more now because it's awesome. Anyway, I'm sorry guys, I'm rambling way too much. Uh, go enjoy your day. Thank you for stopping by and I will be back soon with more updates on stuff. Right. Don't make fun of me. All right, later, bye. Yeah, bye.